Well, hello there. You join us on day two in Rotterdam and we've got another exciting day planned. Hi, if you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Don Travel and we release a new cruise related video every single week. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. Fortunately, the weather was looking like it was going to clear and after yesterday's very wet day, we were really excited to get off and explore Rotterdam. Yes, so we had a plan that we were going to get off and first of all head to the New York Hotel. Once we arrived on the dockside it was just a very very short walk to our first stop which was the New York Hotel, the former headquarters of the Holland America Line. It's a very traditional building and you cannot fail to spot it from the ship or when you're walking along the dock. Yes it looks completely different to all the other modern skyscraper buildings that surround it. There are several different entrances to the building itself, one for hotel guests and one for the main restaurant and cafe. Even though it is a hotel, it is still open to the general public. So we walked in to be greeted with a little souvenir shop. The ceilings were so high, the floors were wood, so it gave the feeling as if you were walking out on an open deck. Really nice. Fantastic building. This You could tell there is so much history there. We were greeted by some really friendly members of staff who took our order very quickly. We chose to sit right in the centre of the building near the main bar area so we could just admire everything that was going on. It was no time at all that our coffees arrived and we sat there quite happily just admiring the ship models, the different decorations around, how the building was laid out. It was fantastic. When the waiter came over just to ask us if everything was all right, we started having a little conversation with him and he asked us if we wanted a little brief history of the building. And when we said yes, he was so happy because he just started talking about the building. Yes, that waiter was fantastic. He told us all about the different history of the rooms and what each of them were used for. The room that we actually had our coffee in and where the main bar area was an office area and there were various offices all the way around, including those that are hotel rooms now. They were also offices and it was the back of the building that was sometimes used by passengers. In the building there is a historical walkway where you can actually do a full loop of the building. There's a number of historical items, photos, all from when Holland America first set up their transatlantic route from Rotterdam to New York. Some of the highlights include in the reception area there is lots of different clocks that tell you the different times of all the cities around the world. At the entrance to the hotel there's a revolving doorway which looks absolutely fantastic. Perhaps we should have given that a go but we didn't. We just admired it from afar. After learning about the history, enjoying a really good coffee, we then made our way out of the New York Hotel and down to the water taxi base that's literally just outside. Now prior to boarding the taxi we did download the app and make a reservation which we later found was the best way to do it because if you just turn up you can be waiting a really really long time for a water taxi to arrive and pick you up. Yes there are two options when you arrive at the water taxi office. If you're wanting to go into the city centre you join what is quite a long queue and it is very very popular. If you wanted to go other locations you can go into the office and ask if there is space at different numbered water taxis and they will allocate you one of those. Luckily for us as Dom said we had pre-booked water taxi and it turned out to be water taxi 15 and we weren't waiting very long at all and it did appear that those who wanted to go into the city centre were waiting quite a while. Once our taxi arrived, only myself and Tom got on it to the dismay of all the queuing passengers waiting for the taxi to the city centre. But as we said, if you make a reservation, then it's your priority. So we got on this water taxi and it was an incredible experience. It's amazing just how quickly they travel. We had booked the water taxi over to the Euro Mass, but it was first going to do one stop, which is located at the Erasmus Bridge. But that meant me and Dom had a spectacular view of Iona. We whipped all the way around the side of Iona at speed and it looked fantastic and it literally took us seconds to reach the Erasmus Bridge. The water taxi costs for a single trip four euros fifty and I recommend it highly. From the Erasmus Bridge we had taken on some extra passengers. Now with everyone safe on board the water taxi we headed at speed towards the UL mast. Darting across the river it was spectacular. The water taxi taxi does tilt as you are turning so me and Don were 
moving side to side, but that makes for the fun of the ride. So if you are a little bit weary about that, just make sure you are aware, but it really is a fantastic experience. There's a water taxi pick up and drop off point just outside the Euromast, which is really convenient because we got off the water taxi, walked across the road, and we were there at the main entrance to the Euromast. The Euromast has been one of those attractions in Rotterdam that myself and Tom have been really, really looking forward to go into. It gives you some incredible views from 185 metres off the ground. It is chargeable to enter the Euromast, and it is actually split into two fees. You can go up to the viewing platform halfway up, and then once again onto the Euroscope, which is the rotating platform, where now newly added in the last 12 months is a glass floor viewing area that opens up as you are ascending up on that rotating platform. So after you enter the Euromast building and you purchase your ticket, you go through a little turnstile and you're directed to an elevator slash lift that takes you all the way up. And it's got to be one of the quickest lifts we've ever used. It is very, very fast. Well, it's a lot quicker than on Iona. Oh, yes. <laughs> Once we arrived, we got to the main viewing platform and we were just blown away by the views. The weather had cleared and the skies were blue. The sun was shining. It was beautiful. We couldn't believe how far we could see. Now, we didn't realise that places such as Delft and The Hague were just so close by and you could see those cities from up here on the UL mast. You could also have a perfect view across the port and to where we were yesterday over to SS Rotterdam and then further afield such as the football stadium. On a really good day you can even see all the way over to Antwerp. Surrounding the Euromast, there are a number of really nice attractions, including this beautiful park that from the top looked incredible. Once you'd reached that platform and we'd explored it for a little while, you could ascend up to the second level of the platform, which again gave spectacular views. There's a narrow winding staircase that takes you all the way up and it can be a little bit daunting for those that don't like heights. But don't worry, there is also a lift available to take you up. Once you get to the top of that lift or the staircase, you join a queue to enter the Euroscope. Now, as we said, the Euroscope is an additional charge and there is a member of staff that takes your token in order to allow you access to the Euroscope. Once you enter, you each take a seat on a round seated platform and wait for the show to begin. It begins with an incredible light display and as the light display is kicking off, you suddenly begin to feel yourself rise as the scoop begins to ascend. Now the lights disappear and suddenly you are met with fantastic views even better than the ones you had before and you are lifting up whilst turning 360 degrees. Then when you almost reach the top the frosted floor glass underneath your feet does turn clear and you can see what is happening below you and we found that fascinating. For those who really do not like heights there is a button located on your seat that means you can press it and the glass will return opaque again. As you spin 360 degrees you get some spectacular views of the surrounding areas and it does take your breath away especially if you're not too keen on heights. Now the experience lasts around seven minutes so it's not too long at all but there's just one group of people in per experience so if you are waiting in the queue bear that in mind that you are only waiting for around seven minutes so it doesn't take too long. Once we descended we then went down and had a little drink in the main restaurant. Now they've got a fully equipped bar and restaurant in the Euromast that you can have a little bit of lunch or you can make evening dining reservations as well. Also they do a cafe facility at the bottom and the top of the Euromast but the one at the top of the Euromast can get extremely busy so they sometimes cannot accommodate everyone but they do their best to accommodate as many as possible. So all in all we'd say we would probably give it about an hour and a half to spend at the Euromast to fully appreciate it. The Euromast experience definitely didn't disappoint and we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and we'd even go back again in future. The total cost of entry for the two activities is around about £20 per person so it's not too bad at all. And then as you exit the Euromast itself you go through a small little gift shop and a cafe that we spoke about earlier on the ground 
ground floor level. From the Euromast, we decided to go and have a walk through one of the parks that we could see when we were at the top, and it was beautiful. There were so many people out enjoying the good weather, walking their dogs, sitting there having coffees, and even preparing for the football match that was happening later on in the evening. Yeah, in such a contrast to yesterday where the weather was awful, it was pouring down with rain most of the day. Now it was about 15 degrees, bearing in mind that it is February and we couldn't believe how warm it was. We definitely didn't need the big coats that we had on. From the park, we decided not to take another water shuttle taxi, but actually to walk through the city of Rotterdam back towards the Erasmus Bridge to get back on Iona. As we crossed the Erasmus Bridge, it's an ideal place to take photos and of course we had to oblige. We even spotted someone doing a little gender reveal for their baby, which is quite interesting to see and it's an unusual place to choose, I suppose. The bridge is always very busy with people, trams, bikes, but it's an excellent place to photograph the ship. Again, like we have said before, it was a very easy process to get back on Iona. No queues at all, through security in minutes and back on the ship. Thanks for watching our second day in Rotterdam on Iona. If you've got any comments or questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. If you'd like to support us in creating future content and receiving exclusive benefits, we're also available on Patreon. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free. And hit that bell notification button to never miss a video from us. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.